I kept thinking, what if you fart? Shit yourself. Yeah, but like, because your body is rela so mm. relaxed and I fight my sleep anyways. Bag in a bag in a bag again. Whoa. Whoa. So my loves, today's video is going to be a little bit different. Because I'm doing something so exciting in a few days, but I'm also really nervous. I have never done anything like this in my life before. Part of me does just want to cancel the whole thing because of how scared I am. But it's something I've wanted to do for as long as I can remember. Pretty much since I was a young girl, actually. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you every little aspect of the journey. Even the stuff that a lot of you may not want to see. I know that I won't be able to film like all of the process, but the before and after... I got it covered. So for those of you that don't follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you will not know that I am getting a rhinoplasty. But I'm not getting a rhinoplasty where they break your full nose. I'm having a septo rhinoplasty, I believe it's pronounced. And the reason for this is that I want to get rid of the bump on my nose here. I've had it since I was a little girl. No one else in my family has it, which is really weird. I don't know why I've got this nose. And I know it is nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to be insecure of. But for me, personally, since I was young, it has always been an insecurity of mine. And it's really unusual because I don't look at other people's noses and ever think, oh gosh, you should be insecure of that or anything like that. If anything, I think they look beautiful, but for me, it's just a personal thing I've struggled with for quite a few years. And I know there's a lot of conflicting opinions about surgery and fillers and, you know, changing your appearance to fit beauty standards. And I do actually completely agree with you here. If it wasn't for beauty standards, I probably wouldn't feel as insecure about my nose as I have done for the past like 15, 16 years. But I have been safer to do this since I started earning like a self income. So probably since I was 16. And I've always said through the process of saving over however many years it's been, that if it does come to the point where it doesn't bother me or I don't think about it as much, then I won't get the procedure done and I'll use that money for something else. However, as you will know, if you have followed me for a while, I have been super open about the fillers I've got. Obviously had my nose filler and I think I had that continuously for about five years because it is such a prominent insecurity of mine. Whereas I had my lips done once just because I wanted to see what it would look like and that's it. I haven't had anything else for about two years now. Since then, I have got everything dissolved. So this is my complete natural face now. But still, that nose just keeps digging at me and digging at my self-confidence so it's just something that I personally want to do. So throughout this video I'm going to be properly going in depth, I'm going to be completely open and honest with you guys about costs and where I'm getting it done, procedure, the aftermath and just on a scale of 1 to 10 how painful it's going to be because I have tried to watch quite a few videos on stuff like this and a lot of people they look really good after they've had their surgery and they don't actually seem to be that much pain so whether that's the painkillers I don't know but I'll talk you through the process. So I first called up about this procedure procedure probably January February. I was intending to get this in the September previously but I think I was just a little bit too scared and I was had a lot going on. So I thought I'd wait and obviously a lot of people are going to be like why are you not doing this in the winter when you can hide your face and not going to be going out all the time and seeing people you can kind of hide your recovery. I'm not really the type of person that would hide their recovery. I do want you guys to see every little step of the way just in case you are planning on doing something like this yourself. Or maybe this will scare you out of doing it. I don't know like I'm just going to try and be as honest as possible because honesty is the best policy and I don't want anyone going in to something similar expecting something completely different and then regretting it in the future i do actually have quite a few friends who have had those jobs and i'll be honest a few of them haven't been too happy with it as soon as they've had it but it's because of swelling and bruising it won't look exactly how you intended it to look until a good few months after i know with a normal rhinoplasty it's like six to eight months whereas this one i think is six to eight weeks so fingers crossed i'll be able to see more results obviously a lot sooner so i called up the clinic and the one that i'm going to is the monte fury hospital which is in brighton this is because I've had quite a few friends go there before and I've absolutely loved their results and their experience from talking to them just sounds incredible. So I'd rather go with a trusted source. I know a lot of people go abroad for their nose jobs, but for me, I just feel more comfortable being in like the comfort of my own home, knowing that I have family around me and friends that could obviously be there for me if I needed them, if something was to go wrong. So I decided to go with the Montefiore Hospital and initially when we were first speaking about all this, I think I got quoted £5,000 roughly. Um, it's definitely definitely not that which I'm really sad about because the other day I got the invoice through which you pay prior to the procedure and it was actually £7,050 which is crazy and I've tried to compartmentalise the price and if it's worth it and 
let's say I live to like 95, it's gonna be about 29p per day. And this is for the rest of my life. So I'm hoping, obviously I live to that age, but also, as I said, I've been saving for this for years and it's never gone out of my mind. If it had, I wouldn't be doing this. It's just something that's gonna make me happier. And if you don't agree with it, then that's completely fine. But um, a lot of you guys will know that this is something I've honestly dreamed of for a long time now. And to those of you who don't have insecurities like this, then oh my goodness, props to you. And I'm so glad you feel that way, but this is just something I'm doing for me and I hope you can just understand that and don't leave any hate or anything. But at the end of the day, it's my body, my choice. I do get to decide what I want to do with it. And this is just one of those things. So to break it down for you properly, the actual procedure I'm having is the septa rhinoplasty, including a graft slash implant following trauma or excision of a tumor, which I think this is just like easier for them to write in medical terms. But I don't have a tumor. I haven't had a tumor removed, okay. But I am having an implant of some sort using my own cartilage. So for the procedure on Thursday, I'm actually going in at 7 a.m. I'm going in anesthetic. I won't feel a thing. It's supposed to be a 45 minute procedure. Basically what they do is they create two little incisions on the side of my nose here. And using tools, they're gonna scrape away the bump in my nose and then they will pull out that cartilage. They kind of put it in a crusher and they crush my cartilage and then they're shoving it back in my nose here. Because when I've been for my consultations, I went to one with my filler and one without so that my surgeon could just see kind of what I wanted to achieve. And obviously my nose natural so he knew what to take out. I do have a dent in my tip though where I've had my filler dissolved and apparently I found out the other day they're not continuing to do filler in the tip of people's noses anymore or at least a lot of practices aren't because it can actually cause a lot of problems later on down the line which this dent is definitely one of them because I didn't have that before and I believe this is from the process of dissolving filler because apparently I can't remember the exact terms but basically when you have your filler dissolved there is a chance that it can dissolve for example like how I did in my nose my cartilage because there's something in filler that your body naturally produces so when the dissolvent obviously goes in it can also by chance dissolve what your body naturally produces and I think that's what happened with my nose so it's a bit annoying but you know you pay the price. My surgeons looked over my nose and he said that we don't need to touch anything in my tip so I'm assuming that will go away with surgery or maybe long-term swelling will cover it I'm not really too sure. If I was to have a septo rhinoplasty where they completely took away my bump from here to here I wouldn't be able to breathe because my nasal passages as you can see are very small. I don't really have big nostrils at all so I probably face complications ever down the line with that. So after the procedure I will only be in hospital for about a day. I'm not an overnight stay, it's just a day case in and out. And the procedure is supposed to take 45 minutes to an hour, as I said, because I have quite a low blood pressure the past few times that I've been like going to the doctors and doing my bloods and, you know, checking all my vitals, making sure everything's okay. My blood pressure and my heart rate is slower than what it should be. So they are just not worried as such because it's nothing life-threatening, but they just want to monitor me closely, obviously after my procedure, because there's a lot more complications that can come along with having anesthesia and a low blood pressure. For example, I fall easier. I'm not really in control of anything. <laughs> so my boyfriend is gonna be there and we're gonna be staying in Brighton for two days. They just recommended that I do the extra day just in case there is any complications. And I do have to stay in hospital or they have to, you know, keep me close by to keep me monitored. So my lovely boyfriend is gonna be there looking after me. And apparently I'm not even like allowed to get out of bed myself. Personally, I've never been under anesthetic. So I don't know how this sort of stuff works. Yeah, they just want to keep a close eye on me, which is nothing to worry about. I'm actually really thankful that they just want to do that as a precaution. So yeah, that is all of the invasive details that I can think of sharing. Obviously, as the journey goes along, if there's anything that comes to mind, then I will tell you guys about that. I want to start the whole vlogging process on Thursday when we head down to Brighton. I'm not allowed to eat for eight hours before, so you do just have to fast a little bit, obviously, before surgery. But luckily for me, my admission is so early in the morning that I will just be asleep. So I'll have a really lovely meal before and then they also just recommend that you take a big drink of water before you go to bed and then when you wake up in the morning also a big drink of water make sure you go to the toilet before your surgery shower obviously cleanse yourself of any bacteria remove your piercings remove nail varnish and i have had to go for tests before as well where like they've checked all of my blood so they've made sure that i don't have the common bacteria that you can get from hospitals i'm completely clear of everything so I am completely ready to go with the procedure. I think the main thing that's just scaring me is um, actually being put to sleep because as I said, I've never done that and I'm afraid of needles anyway. And you can't have anyone in the room with you apart from obviously the surgeons, anesthetists, is that how you pronounce it? And you know what I mean? Like I would absolutely love to be under 18 and someone be holding my hand because I know that you can do that, but sadly I can't. I just need to be a big girl. If I'm a big enough girl to be having the procedure and paying for the procedure myself, then I can do this. So I guess from now, I will see you on Thursday 
Wednesday when we are heading down to Brighton. Hopefully I won't look too bad. So say goodbye. To the nose. You can even see me in the mirror. Hi. This is the last time you're ever going to see this nose. I'm so excited. Sorry that you have to see this uh, lovely site. I really don't think it's going to get much better throughout the video either. I've only got nine minutes of footage, so that's probably not a good thing. I should probably delete some stuff. But we have just arrived in Brighton. My very supportive boyfriend has come with me. And I just wanted to give you like a little room tour because this is where I'm going to be staying for two nights. Thanks. They wanted me, as I said, to stay the day after my surgery just in case of any complications. And then, yeah, we go home on Saturday. But I love staying here. It's actually really cute, look, minus the marks on the wall, but... It's very, what would you call it? Modern? Very, very Brighton. It is very Brighton, isn't it? Yeah. So here's me. Sorry, I don't have any trousers on. And we have the shower. We have obviously like just brushed our teeth and stuff because we did just arrive and it's about 6 p.m. now. So this is the bathroom. And then we have made the room a little bit messy, but you get a TV, which is perfect because if I do feel really bad tomorrow, then at least we can just lie in bed and watch Netflix. They give you like a microwave and everything. More places to hang your clothes. And ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. This is the lovely view. Right now, we're gonna get ready. I say ready. I haven't brought any makeup or anything with me because there was just absolutely no point. I'm not trying to make myself glam for the next few days. We're gonna get ready and we're gonna go to the Copper Clam, which is also a personal favorite of ours. We came here last time when I had my consultation and oh, the food was incredible. I love seafood and they just do the best. And I just really like Brighton in general anyway. The Copper Clam is about a two minute walk from where we're staying. So, oh wait, did I also mention there's like a little seating area? Right there. Super cute! They also give you earplugs because it is quite loud here because it's right by road. But um, we've we've enjoyed our stays. I'm going to take my camera with me and show you the food because I do think it's to die for. And I do think you should go and visit there if you live near Brighton or ever visiting Brighton. And then I'm at Brighton early tomorrow at 6 a.m. And my admission is 7 a.m. And I'm going to take like some night clothes and a dressing gown. Well, a dressing gown. I'm taking my, what's it called? A snoody. Snuggle hoodie. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I'm only a day case. I don't really have to take that much stuff. But I'm going to take my camera with me. And after I've had my surgery, hopefully I can date you. But it is in a ward with like other people. I do have a private room when I first go in. So maybe I can catch you up then. Uh, after my consultation with my surgeon just before having the surgery. But apart from that, I might not be able to film that much out of respect for other people. People, but I'll definitely catch you up when I'm home. So yeah, let's go to the Copper Clown. Guys, they gave me a blanket because I was cold. <laughs> and they've got heaters on as well. It's so pretty. And the sunset is going to be over there actually. So that's a beautiful view. We've got the mussels to start. I don't usually eat a lot for starters because then I won't eat my mains, but we're just going to share this. Yum. We're not sharing. I'm having <gasps> most of it. It's pretty nice. I'm having most of it. <gasps> you look so cute. Thank yes, you. Um, yeah. And then just some um, ketchup with mayo, please. Ketchup with mayo. Yeah. Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> Guys, I'm Thank over you. the moon. I basically asked if I could swap the whelks for some prawns and I thought they were just gonna give me the little prawns like last time, but they gave me king prawns. Oh, so excited. He's gonna try my concoction for the oyster. Go on. That, how incredible is that? <gasps> so as you can see, I did, I think it was shallot vinaigrette with, um, two drops of Tabasco, some lime juice. Honestly, incredible. Good morning. Um, it's about half six now. I've just been up since six. I'll be honest, I haven't slept. I'm so nervous. Whenever I have an alarm set, I just don't sleep because I'm scared I'm gonna miss it. It's like that last time we stayed here as well because I had my consultation and that is another alarm. Perfect timing. So I'm gonna go to the hospital now. <laughs> Bless you, you're actually awake with me. You've not really slept though either, have you? No. So the hospital is only six minutes away and I don't need to be there till seven But I'm gonna get there earlier because being so early in the morning on a Friday I don't know if there's that many ubers about it does look like there is I'm just a stress head and I think it's all just kind of hit me this morning Like I'm really scared of being put under anesthesia um, Especially like not having anyone there. I know you usually don't unless you're underage, but I've never done it before so And I don't like needles either but I get to talk to my surgeon this morning, which is good. I'm not allowed to eat anything. I'm allowed to have some water. And I'm really excited to just have it done now because I've been wanting it for so long. So here's the last look at the nose, guys. Take it in. She's gonna be a new bitch tomorrow. I'm here. I'm trying to keep my voice down because it's only a little room. And I don't want to disturb anyone else here. But it's also so early in the morning. I just had my lemon cream on. Also shed quite a few tears this morning just because I'm so nervous. My surgeon and my anaesthetist have just been in and 
completely reassured me. And I've now got some really funky socks on. I think they're quite stylish actually. These are compression socks and they measure around the width of your leg in order to see if you're forming any blood clots or anything like that before and after surgery, which I'm personally rocking the look. I do actually need to get changed now. I do have like an hour into a surgery, so I'm just gonna chill with I've got like a little TV. Luckily I brought my book because I don't really fancy watching TV right now and I'm really a really good book right now. Hold on. This book like the couple next door, the family upstairs. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I feel like I've already predicted the ending though, but I think I'll probably finish it today. Cause I've already got halfway through and that was just yesterday, so. Now that I'm changed, I'm gonna read my book and relax. Cause I've been thinking about this far too much. I'm back home now after having the operation. I don't actually feel too bad. I feel quite good, so. Obviously the painkillers are doing something. I don't feel as drowsy as I did about an hour ago, but I'm definitely not all the way there yet. The absolute darling that he is. He's just um, ordered some food. We've um, got Chinese, because it's literally the only thing I'm craving right now. And being gluten intolerant, I can't actually have a lot of stuff from like bakeries and kind of sandwiches and stuff, because a lot of places don't do gluten-free bread. They actually did gluten-free bread though at the hospital, which was good, I had a chicken sandwich. Just didn't really taste of much. So I'm just waiting for the food to cool down because I'm actually not allowed to eat hot food or drink hot drinks, so we're just waiting for it to cool down. But I haven't got bruising around my eyes yet, which they said will come tomorrow. I was expecting to come out of surgery and look at myself and be like, Miss Girl. The only thing that's really putting me off is this thing because it's so big and I don't think it's supposed to be this big. It's like quite loose as well. This is just to catch all the blood that comes out of my nose, which I have feel it a few times, so I'll probably change it sooner rather than later. They've given me some gauze pads, they've given me tape, codeine, which I don't usually like taking codeine because when I had it before it made me hallucinate, but probably gonna want it because this is gonna be quite a painful recovery, I assume. I've also been given some cream that I have to put on the inside of my nose and then like gently pinch. I'm not allowed to get my finger and rub it around because this prevents infection. And then I've also got some spray, which I need to spray up there probably do all of this when I change this over, which is to stop congestion. But I'll be honest, like I'm not actually that congested in my nose right now. I can breathe for it, but I'm trying not to. I'm just gonna stay inside the hotel room. It's a bit annoying because the TV doesn't really work, but we've managed to get YouTube to work. So we're watching George and I think it's Arthur actually, because we can't get normal TV or Netflix or anything to work because the remote doesn't work. So streaming thankfully works. And yeah, it's home time tomorrow, but I'll update you as the night goes on because I am starting to get pains now in my nose. I'm not gonna take any medicine yet until I've eight because obvious reasons. If I've hallucinated on coding last time, I highly doubt it's gonna be a fun experience this time too. So yeah, I'm gonna have a really nice trip. Um, I'll let you guys know what I see. But yeah, this is just the current situation. I haven't really got much swelling around my eyes right now. What do you think I do? I don't really think no, I No, there's only bruises like just there. Oh, am I having bruises now? Can you not see them? <gasps> oh, wow, I didn't have that before. Mm. Interesting. Okay, so I do have bruises, guys. Thanks for pointing out. I couldn't see. So, uh, yeah, this is just annoying on my lip. It's making like drinking, talking, eating a fair bit difficult. I absolutely rammed a full pack of Harry Bows, so I'm sure I'll be bouncing off the walls I'm soon. You're gonna eat. Yeah, and I wish for gold, yeah. But as of right now, I'd probably say pain level is six out of 10. It's really not that bad. And I was so shocked at how quickly I fell asleep. The person who um, gives you the anesthetic or anesthesia, she was so lovely. Like they were such a good team. They were all really friendly. I also had the oxygen that sends you to sleep as well as the injection through the cannula because I was just a really nervous patient, as they could tell. But I feel like I kept my cool. I was quite calm and collected. I just obviously shared my concerns that I was nervous. I can feel all of the blood in the back of my throat, which isn't fun, and I keep smelling whatever is on this gauze. It kind of smells like um, acetone. Ugh, I'm so excited to eat food. Yeah, the only other thing I'm finding quite difficult is peeing. Like. I'm trying not not to force it out, but I've definitely got some form of thrush from whatever um, not antibiotics. I don't really know what it would be, whatever pain relief they've given me. I usually get um, thrush from penicillin, but I did state, as you can see on my little band, I am allergic to penicillin. I only get like a really mild reaction of thrush, so it's not nothing major, but they did say specify everything. Also mentioned latex, because I can't have second skin with tattoos and stuff. So bless them, they had to do uh, latex free gloves and stuff. And they had like a little debrief before I went in there. But yeah, I'll update you in a few hours or so. There's no point doing pointless updates unless I'm in immense amounts of pain. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Talk to you after I eat this absolutely delicious food. I'm saying it's delicious because it looks delicious. Could be absolutely ram, but it looks amazing. So I'm just gonna take off my gauzes because 
It's getting in the way of me eating and I need to redo it anyway. So I just thought I'd film to see what it immediately looks like. Remember, I haven't had my nose cut. Nice has. Looking good. Oh wow, that is a pretty sight. Have a look. Yum. Yum. Oh, my whole nose feels so strange. Oh, time to eat, boys. It's a lovely, bright, sunny day in Brighton and I'm walking around like this. But do you know what? I actually have no shame because I paid for this and it's something I really want to do. And yeah, okay, people can look, but I knew this part was going to happen. I've got to walk around London like it as well. So Brighton's probably the most accepting place you could be. I'm just going to rock it with style. But I am going to end this video here because I'm going to fill you in with the rest of the recovery in a separate video. I feel like this video is going to be far too long for anyone to watch. Yeah, we're just heading back to London now. And so far, I'm not in any pain. Like, my recovery's been absolutely amazing. Touch wood, I don't want to jinx mm -hmm. anything. But like, I haven't had any pain or anything. I've redone my dressing. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to some of you guys who wanted to have a septorhinoplasty or even a nose job. Maybe you could go to the same place as I did because I fully recommend them. Honestly, it was such a blissful experience. And I don't really know what I was scared for. So yeah, I love you all so, so much. And I will see you in the next video.